Hello lovely painter people and again welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland on yet another coronavirus lockdown day. When will it end? And I'm going back to the first ever book that I wrote and painted published in the year 2000 and I was a young man then. Art of Watercolour. It is such an easy book to follow this and it's, it's ideal for beginners or if you're a little bit nervous about watercolours in, in particular. Um, Really useful little book. Lots of tips and techniques, lots of projects, all kinds of things going in there, but all really simplified. It's all going on in there. Materials, brush strokes, everything. And the one I'm going to do today is this one. A little snow scene. This won't take long and it's very easy. So on with the drawing before we start. I'll just have a quick look at that as I'm doing it. Always useful to have a look at what you're, what you're painting. So I'm starting off with a couple of trees here. There's a big one coming up here, Lean, leaning inwards slightly. I'm not going to stick too precisely to every twig and bough that I've got in this tree here. And I'm pressing on harder with the pencil so that you can see the pencil mark. You can see the drawing. If it were just me here, I wouldn't be pressing on anywhere near as hard as this. In fact, quite often I wouldn't even do a, a drawing at all. There. That'll do for that one. And another one, a little bit further away there. The paper I'm using is called the Langton Rough. It's only a 140 pound weight. And I never pre-stretch or mess about with it. I chop a sheet in half and tape it to the board. Simple as that. There's another tree. We've got a little bit of a mound here. These trees are standing on a mound. So I'll just add that in where I'm going to do it. Here I've got some middle distance trees. All I need for that is a squiggly line. <laughs> Technical term, squiggly line. And that's where my foreground lies. There, I've got a little bit more distance there and I shall have some very distant trees on that horizon line there. Don't need to draw those at all really. And middle distance trees there. I'm not going to draw the post in. No need for that. That's it really. Drawing done. Easy as that. Now in with some paint with my very clean palette. Somebody actually said to me on feedback on YouTube recently, could you clean your palette out so we can see the colours that you mix places? A, a lot easier. Sacrilege! No! I'm never going to clean my palette out before any paint whatsoever. Loads of water. Starting from the top. And I'm just going to use one colour in the sky. Just the one. Which will be ultramarine blue. French ultramarine blue. I'm going through the trees. Don't start going around bits. And I'm using my one and a half inch flat wash brush here, Aquafine watercolour brushes. Mop up there, Ultramine Blue. And another question, what happens when the paint dries up? Well look, that's dried up. See? Stroke over with water. And there it is. Ready to paint again. Just Ultramine Blue. And I shall wipe that on from the top. A little bit stronger, I think. What you've got to remember is it's going to dry a lot lighter than when you put it on. So allow for that. There, that's better. And coming down all the way to the bottom. Like so. Now I'm just going to wash out, squeeze out, and mop up again. Out, squeeze out, 
and take out some clouds. Isn't that simple? I've got a drip there, look. Make it into a cloud. <laughs> Easy peasy. All I'm doing is sucking paint out of the paper. If I were to use kitchen roll, which is the common one, kitchen roll will suck the paint out all the way down to the paper, leaving you with a big hard white blob with a sharp edge. Doing it this way is softer. As I'm sucking paint out there, I'll just drop a little bit back in there, look. I've got a bit of cloud shadow. And again, suck out a little bit more here. Now, that's the sky done, really. I don't want to fiddle about with it. Have your sky finished while it's still wet. That way you're not going to get the watermarks or cauliflowers, which they're commonly known as. Broccoli's much better. <laughs> a little bit more there. there. Sky done. I'll mop it up. Now, I want to let that dry ever so slightly but not totally dry. I want it still to be a little bit soggy down here. So I'll just leave that for one minute. Now, as I said, it's just a little bit drier than when I first put it on, but it's not dry yet. So again, ultramarine blue, this time with a tiny, tiny touch of burnt sienna into it, just to knock off the bright blueness. And I've changed to my rigger brush. That's yeah, right. I've changed my round brush, number eight round brush, there. That's its original shape, there you go. Now, just a little bit of that on there, I'm just gonna tap on, and you can see, because it's still ever so slightly damp, it's spreading ever so slightly on the top, and that just gives you more of a decent hazy effect. Now, snow-covered fields in that middle distance, in that, sorry, in that far distance. All I need to do now for those is a few lines going across there. There. Hedges in the fields. Isn't that simple? Just with the clean damp brush now. Soften down a little bit here and there. Pulling a little bit of the base of those trees into the top of the field. And a little bit down there. There we go. That's the distance done. Simple as that. Very few colours in this painting, mainly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm getting that mix a little bit stronger this time for these nearer trees here. Look. Same process though, tap on. That's a little bit too strong, I think. There, that's better. If you get it too strong, just put a bit more water onto it. So that was a deliberate mistake, you see, for me to show you how to do it. <laughs> and if you believe that, you'll believe anything. There. Now again, still with the round brush, but this time with the tip of the brush, what I'm going to do is drag a few bits down. Look. Right, so. Now with the side of the round brush, middle distance trees done. So, so simple. Don't fiddle. There. Now, I've changed my three-quarter inch brush. Again, Aquafine. I'll tell you all about the brushes at the end of the video. But the Aquafine brushes are just really lovely brushes. They're good and sturdy. You can give them plenty of abuse and they'll hold lots of water as well. So, 
Still with Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna, but a little bit darker this time. Everything's just getting that little bit darker as it comes further forward. And all I'm doing to start with on this is with the side of the three quarter inch brush up. Let's put it on and drag it down a bit. Notice I'm still going through these big trees here, just like I did with the sky. showing through here and there as well. Now with the sharp edge of the three quarter inch brush, tap on and drag down. Yeah. I know I keep saying this, but isn't that easy? people say to me yeah you make it look easy but it is trust me I'm an artist <laughs> keep it in that lot there but less sticks in as they go further away Again, with the side of that three quarter inch brush, a few flicky bits there at the bottom of that lot. Now with my fingernail, just scrape off a few bits here and there. Just dragging up. Use the back of your little pinky. <laughs> because a thumb would be too thick. Now, as I keep saying, I'm painting through these big trees here, and it's not a problem, because if you need to reveal some more light. This is not dry, but it's getting there. Um, all I need to do, suck it out again, look. See, look at that. Go back in again, suck it out some more. And again here, had that one in the distance, didn't I? And you can do this even once it's totally dried. You just have to go over it a few more times, but you can still take it out. Let's go into that one again. Now I'm gonna let that dry for five minutes before I do the big trees. And my paper's dried completely now, so I can go in to the big trees. And I'm using my round brush and my rigger brush for this lot. Starting off with a little bit of yellow ochre this time. Just get a little bit of light here and there. Bit of yellow ochre there. Don't want much of it. With the tip of my round brush, you see what a lovely... Fine point I can get with that. But also with the round brush look, if you press on harder over here, you can get a nice broad line as well. See? And then out to a thin point, all with the same brush. Round brush, lovely brushes these. Now, a little bit of Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna, nice and dark now. It's almost black, but not quite, because I never use manufactured black. Wherever you put a manufactured black, you're going to kill that area stone dead. That's what I think anyway. Make your black. Ultimate blue and burnt sienna will give you a lovely black. Whilst that yellow's still wet, I'm getting in a few bits here, look. Like so. 
Again, you see what a lovely fine point I've got there. And just wiggling it down a little bit. Wiggling it down, that's a new technical term. And you can see the dark mix running across into the yellow ochre, giving a, more, a bit of a softer effect than sharp edges. Don't want sharp edges. Now I'm going to switch to my rigger brush. Still with that same mix. Rigger brush. It's a flicky, bouncy brush, and a lot of people are very scared of that. But just, I'll go back over here. Just like the thing, if you, if you want a broader stroke with your rigger brush on, press on again, harder, and give you a broader stroke. Look. For fine bits, just let the thing flick around on you. I've got a whole tree going on on the side here. <laughs> I've got a bit on the side. It's a tree. Look, let it flick around there. Riga brush, fabulous thing. But back to this one. And a few twiggy bits. Just bouncing the brush around on the paper. Let it do its job. And when I start to stick these in, these darker twigs coming out of the side, you see how it knocks this lot further back. I'm going to strengthen that mix a little bit, a little bit more burnt sienna into it. Twiggy bits here. Darken at the base of that one further away. A bit darker down here, this one. So, so easy. Don't fiddle about too much. Don't have millions of twigs. I just want a little bit darker on the tree trunk itself there. Just to that left hand side. Now, back to my big brush, my three-quarter inch flat. Because up there, there's nowhere near enough on the top for the canopy of a winter tree. But don't fiddle about painting millions and millions of twigs. Still with that same colour, but with my flat brush, my three-quarter, I'm just loading the brush that way, wipe off excess paint, and then just tap on. So simple. Now into those, just wipe that little bit up. Now into those, I want a little bit of burnt sienna. Just burnt sienna, look, there. Plenty of water into that. Again, wipe off excess. Tap a little bit on that. Just adding a bit more colour to the hole. And that slightly warmer colour of burnt sienna will bring that further forward as well. There, big trees. Now, we're into the foreground stuff now. But actually that little bit there to start with, and that's just ultimate blue with lots of water into it. Now the interesting thing with a snow scene, don't have too much white. <laughs> That sounds counterintuitive, really, doesn't it? Well, listen to me, counterintuitive. But too much white is very boring in the snow scene. Have bits of white. And of course, in watercolour, you're not going to use white paint. So leave the white of the paper showing through here and there. And it's just different depths of blue now for these big bits in the foreground. Starting off with, again, ultimate blue. Don't change your blue throughout your picture. 
ultramarine blue, tiny, tiny touch of burnt sienna into that. Plenty of water into it. I'm starting off here with this mound, like so. And you've got to work fairly quickly as well. No pressure. <laughs> Now, more water into that, into the brush. Bring some of that forward here, look. Cross back here. And this is what I'm talking about, how much water these brushes will hold. You see that I haven't dipped in again yet. This is just the first dip. Now, a little bit more, just blue. Loads of water into it. Now, just a clean damp brush. No paint. And move this around a little bit. See, there's not much white paper left there. But what there is, Counts. <laughs> now, a few little bits of grass, sorry, grass, sticking out here and there. Um, for the grass in this, I'm using Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna, and I don't want it too bright green. This is not a summer green, a winter scene. But there's a lot of Burnt Sienna I've got into there. Look. What I'm doing, look, flick on a little bit here and there bits of grass sticking up out of the snow and again it's with the three-quarter inch wash brush and don't have too many of these it's just a few bits it's a very effective technique that look all I'm doing is flicking upwards push the brush in flick up it's a very effective technique and like all effective techniques, people say, God, it's good to have some more. And then you end up with a field of grass rather than the snow. A few bits there. Now, clean down brush, soften the base of those. I'm going to let all that out dry for a second or two now. In the meantime, still with my three quarter inch flat brush, Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna as a black. So it's the Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna, more or less equal quantities. Look, there you go, black. And all I'm doing with the sharp edge of that brush, have some sticks there, look. Obviously, make these shorter as they go further away. There. Now is the time to finish this off. So still with the black, but more water into it. All I'm doing, touch the base of the tree, there, with the shadow colour, bring it down the hump, and then across. Likewise there. And the shadow also helps to create that hump. Likewise with those posts. Just with the corner of the brush this time.
now a little bit more blue into that black mix so it's not black it's just a very very dark blue and we're going to have some more bits and pieces here and there Looks a bit messy at the moment with that bit, but it won't be. <laughs> he said, hopefully. Wash out, squeeze that. Again, just a clean damp brush. Move those around a little bit. So it's nice and dark in the foreground. Now, that's the painting done. How easy is that? Very few colours used. And I'm not really waiting that much for things to dry either. I'm carrying on painting a couple of times. Once a little bit over there, and once a little bit from the big trees here. Um, but I'm not hanging around really. Keep on painting. But I just want to show you, before I put my palette down, I just want to show you one thing here. Because when I was kind of like demonstrating the round brush and the rigger brush on this side bit here, Suddenly I've got a tree. If I had this same tree, because this is how easy it can be. Obviously I've made the tree trunk a little bit lighter with more yellow ochre. If I wanted that same tree to be in summer, it's as simple as this one. Hooker's green and burnt sienna. There, bit of hooker's green. Some burnt sienna. Again, side of the brush. The three quarter inch brush. Just tapping on. This is the red wine stroke. The hand shakes better with red wine. Now, a little bit of blue. Let's get some shadow in it. just green rather than blue on top. Now the brushes, as I said, I only use four brushes in total anyway. One and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number eight round and a number four rigger. And these are Aquafine brushes. I also use the same brushes for my acrylics. They are good, strong, sturdy brushes but will hold a heck of a lot of water. And they're not very expensive at all. Likewise with the paints, the paints I'm using here Aquafine watercolours. Again, Dale Rowney. Everything I use is Dale Rowney. Aquafine watercolours. These are £1.80 a tube. And look at the strength of colour I've got from those. They really are lovely paints. The book that I've just been working from, The Art of Watercolour, as I said, this is the first book I ever did. I was a young man. You can tell how young I was. Look at the back picture. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? I look like something out of Led Zeppelin. But that's again a very cheap little book, six quid on the website. Everything that I use is on my website, on my eShop, johnlevensart.com. The paper, the Langton Rough, again, a fabulous paper. It's only 140 pound weight. You don't need to pre-stretch or mess about with it. Get it taped onto the board and paint on it. And it won't wobble and mess you about. Hope you've enjoyed that. And for the next one, I'm going to go back to acrylics. See you soon. Bye-bye.